Okay, here we are. Here's the gang. This is the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund Vanguard Circle. And we are from Andrew Lake in Tennessee, myself in Montreal, Quebec, Mark in Texas, Mission, Texas. And Comrade Net is in Arizona. Okay, we're all over the place, right? Okay. Now, um, who knows what's happening in Gaza right now? You know, on one hand, the Zionist military is pulling out. They pulled out of the Khan Yunus after destroying everything. And yet, you know, Netanyahu says that they're setting a date, you know, to go and invade Rafa. And they've got 40,000 tents. What are they going to use them for? It seems to me like they're going to try to take out the male population, isolate them somewhere else, perhaps even in Egypt with the 40,000 tents, isolate the whole rest of the population, leave them to starve with no defense. And the men, you know, are going to be treated as prisoners. And the prisons that they've already taken from the civilian population in Gaza have been treated like, like torture victims. You know, they're being tortured. And so many times, you know, they get um, uh, their hands tied together and the, and the tie is so, so tight that it cuts into their skin. And a lot of people end up getting, getting their hands amputated because. So, I mean, it's, you know, it just sends shivers through my heart. But uh, I know, that's the current situation there. I know due to, uh, uh, and this is humiliating for pretty much everybody that has that it has to do with those that don't have enough like irrigation have been forced to apparently shave their heads to avoid lice. Uh, and and that's been that there's been a lot of collective humiliation. And I understand that because like hair is usually the most sensitive topic for most people when it comes to like grooming and, you know, appearances and whatever. Um, uh I, I know that the plumbing is worse than it's ever been. Like it was always bad in Gaza, but it's like worse. Like in some places there's no water at all, you know, and they, and that was, that is what they're trying to do. They're trying to take, starve out the Palestinians basically. I heard that there were a um, Eretz crossing in the North on the on one day when they were being told, you know, to let the food aid in, even by the United States, they let in like 325 trucks. And then that, and then they start cutting back again. You know, the next day when there was no media coverage about it, after they got good coverage, the first day, they started cutting back on the trucks again. Not just trucks, transports. I don't mean small trucks. No. Because mm. Biden is speaking out of two sides of his mouth. And Netanyahu knows that. Mm -hmm. Netanyahu knows that. So he knows that Biden can say one thing, but he's not going to act on it. Because he's a Zionist. Yeah. And also covering his ass, you know, because they're going to be accused of complicity and genocide by uh, a number of countries in the International Court of Justice. I think what I you had said before to, to Steve was accurate. I think I think he couldn't deal being shown up by Trump, even though Trump may have not even met what he said. Trump uh, was like, this has to stop and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Trump even Trump said that, you know, that's easy to say. Even Trump was saying, you know, this has got to end. So end it quick. So I don't know what he means by that. What? Drop a nuclear bomb or what? Or pull out, <laughs> you know. It means both at the same time. <laughs> means whatever you want it to mean. It's an empty That's strategy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's get a sampling of what the, the public opinion is in each of our areas. Here on the vigil, you know, I meet the Jewish community. And I'm telling you, the Zionists are backing off. One, nobody's come to attack the banner or me recently. <laughs> Two, um, the number of insults, you know, like uh, vulgar insults, you know, of people passing by in their cars has increased, which means that they're feeling the heat and they're angry that, you know, I'm there, you know, to uh, voice the opposition because they know the opposition is taking hold now. Okay. And there's many more people who are coming up to congratulate. So... Um, I'd say the Jewish community here in Montreal, which is the most conservative in all of North America, is about um, at best 50-50 and at worst 75-25, uh, 25 against the, uh, the genocide. Mostly people are trying to deny that there's a genocide underway. They're saying it's only 30,000, you know, like it's not a real genocide, I mean, like, you know, like every, anywhere else, you know. Only. 
even though, you know, the food is being cut off, you know, so what did they expect to happen? You know, they sort of totally ignore that. Hmm. Well, I mean, in, in all seriousness of what genocide is, if we say that there was a tribe of simply 500 people, if you reduce them down to 300 people, that's genocide. So this numbers game stuff is, I don't like numbers games for that reason. Genocide is the actual agenda to wipe out a people either physically, culturally, or in most cases, actually both by starting culturally and then killing them off. Ah, and most importantly, that regulation says in whole or in part. Because, you know, you can't wait to the end of a genocide in order to declare yeah. the genocide, you know, like it wouldn't yeah. make any sense, you know. Yeah, like... that's right, actually, in whole or in part. Um, and uh, um, the, uh, I mean, I appreciate, I guess, hearing plausible genocide because that, that's not a simple thing to hear the term plausible genocide, but I'd rather just hear what it is. This is genocide. It was genocide before October 27th. It's just now at the big Holocaust Armenian genocide level that it wasn't at before. Uh, but before, I wouldn't call it a genocide. Now, I got into a dispute, you know, with the independent Jewish voices here in Canada in 2008 because they were describing the assault on Gaza at the time as a holocaust. And I said, you don't know what a holocaust is if you say it's a holocaust. I mean, I, I, even, I, it wasn't even a genocide at the time. It was, uh, well, uh, what I called it, you know, was a qualified genocide, a slow genocide. Uh, also in the West Bank, you know, there's ongoing, you know, uh, 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 extra juridical, you know, assassinations of Palestinians happening all the time there. Yeah, of course, mean everything. They don't mean it. They mean nothing. Mm. Mm. Okay, so what's happening? Uh, what's happening in Texas? What do you think people are thinking in Texas? In Texas, uh, where I am, in the in the Rio Grande Valley, there is uh, one Reformed temple, which is about eighty miles away from me. And so uh, I literally have no idea. Uh, okay, but the general population, not necessarily the Jewish population, I'm talking about the general public opinion. I I try to enter into conversations with people all the time, and most people are simply not paying any attention to it. Uh -huh. um, literally, literally not paying any attention to it. Uh -huh. uh, so I talk to my neighbors, I talk with, with my friends, um, I know one person who, who I want nothing, I, I will never speak with again, who actually said a, on, on a Zoom call, actually said a prayer for the IDF forces. They be brought home safely. Yeah, well, and they need it. <laughs> she, she, and and she, she is from the Rio Grande Valley, McAllen, which is right next to where I am in Michigan. But uh -huh. it, it's it's hard to say because this area is not. I mean, it's it's this this is a, this basically is an extension of Mexico. Okay, well, so they're not concerned about them. Um, you know, their public funds uh, amounting to a hundred billion dollars have been. Uh, no, that's Ukraine. That the hundred billion dollars has been spent. How much has been spent on? It's probably about the same. It's come, it's come to about $100 billion now as well, you know, for the Zionist regime having received um, loans, basically. I I think they're expected to pay it back even. Same thing with Ukraine. At least that's, you know, the initial sort of a capitalist way of working. They won't be able to get the money back, though, I don't think, unless they steal it from the uh, Russian um, uh, accounts um, in Western banks in, in which uh, Russia has $300 billion in reserve which are being confiscated to pay for the war in Ukraine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what about Tennessee? What's going on and what are people thinking there? Well, around here, there are very few people who actually consider it a genocide. They call it the Israel-Hamas conflict. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. They don't acknowledge it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well... Eventually, it's got to seep down to them, you know, because haven't they heard about the International Court of Justice or the uh, Security Council vote in favor of a ceasefire? They've never heard of this. It doesn't get carried in the news there. No. Wow. In the South, which would include, you know, where Andrew is in Tennessee and where I am in Texas, sort of, um, 
No, I mean, it's not, it, I mean, it, it's just not an issue. I mean, uh, most people don't simply, e either they support Israel or they simply don't care. You know, There's actually a Christian bookstore in my town that has an Israeli flag. Oh, okay, wonderful. You're not going to find any any pro Palestinians in 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 uh, the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. Okay, it? you know what this means? This means that there's an opportunity here because when we announce, you know, what is actually going on and tell people what they should need to know in order to make uh, a proper opinion of what's happening, they're going to find out sooner or later that they've been misled. They will only remember what you told them. And you told them the truth when they were being lied to. And they will appreciate that. Maybe as, well, as soon as, you know, one month from now. From personal that, experience. That what's that is going happening. on in uh, Arizona? What's happening there? Uh, uh, but, but first, I just want to let you know, I've experienced exactly what you're talking about where you say, and it's, it's, it's scary because you say stuff and everybody just hates you for saying it. Then years later, they'll be like, oh, my God, you were so right. I'm so sorry. That has happened yeah. to me quite a few times. But yeah. Arizona, okay, uh, how do I explain this? Um, like everything in Arizona, it's uh, – the problem is, is this is sticks, sticks online. Usually, they're going to lie to you. I mean, there is an actual way online that I forget what the website is, and it's, it's one of the official government websites or something like that that shows the actual polls of political opinions from the censuses they take, you know? Mm. Um, and that's like the only way to know this for sure. And even then, a lot of people dodge the census, despite the fact that it's apparently illegal to dodge it. I'm a census dodger, by the way. Um, but if it basically using logic, intuition, you know, taking my own polls and then looking at that kind of stuff, I would say that like everything in Arizona, it's always split down the middle because everything's a damn culture war out here. Like, for instance, majority of women out here want Roe versus Wade restored. And yet just recently in Arizona, they said there will never be an abortion in Arizona anymore. They just came from the top. Mm -hmm. um, the people try to advertise we're the most LGBTQ friendly uh, state in you know in the world. Culturally speaking, maybe, but it's actually completely legal out here to discriminate against LGBTQ plus. The cops are typically involved in it. Uh, like, like what do you God mean by help that? You with you. What do you mean what the cops are typically involved in it? The what cops participate in in, 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 in in trans bashing majorly out here. Like mm. there it's it's illegal to turn off the body cam. Mm. That doesn't matter if it's illegal. I mean, like, I mean, I I I heard from I don't want to say his name because he's actually pretty well known. And I I don't know him personally, but I, I I was able to sit down and talk with him because like I approached him just correctly. So I can't say who it was, but he's um he's somebody who knows a lot about California. He's from Long Beach. And he told me in Long Beach, the cops do actually turn off the cameras. And that's what I've seen happen out here. So I don't, I think that that's something that's throughout, you know, the United States. The thing with Arizona, the good news is most of the cops are stupid, but they, but, but they're, but it's not stupid in the way where they're that dumb. It's more stupid in the fact that they're like, um, conventional. Kind of, yeah. In yeah. Conventional. Like very conventional, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they are brutal. They 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 do know how to be diplomatic, though, especially since after twenty twenty. They they know how to be very diplomatic. But it's it's it, the thing with them is that they're um they're typically bored, and so whenever they 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 are they're told to take care of something, they'll like twelve people will body slam one guy. I've seen this happen, like in Glendale particularly, one guy, um, merely merely because he was panhandling because he wanted to buy a beer like anybody with privilege can do and do you do and panhandling is illegal panhandling is illegal in the state of arizona whoa here here in montreal we have panhandlers you know all throughout the subway metro system here racial you know, profiling is completely plus the musicians legal. you know performing you know for for change as well you know racial profiling is completely legal Whoa. Discrimination against LGBTQ plus is completely legal. Mm. Um, uh, and aside from the law, which almost nobody knows, even I'm not sure exactly what the law is because I never studied it. And I am starting to wonder if maybe I should, because the more I learn about the laws, the more disturbed I am by what's actually in them. But um, the, the social cultural climate out here 
is one of a culture war because because like for instance with phoenix you know it, it is bohemia versus bigotry and in in, in glendale it is rich versus poor like it, it, across it it's all like a culture war it's not always okay. done like it's, okay but, we get the idea okay now uh let's raise a topic you know which we should address here and that is this is the most important argument that zionists use hmm and it's not refuted by anybody because, you know, most of the people, you know, in the general populist, you know, opposition don't know anything about Judaism. OK, so the Zionists get away with this argument because nobody knows, you know, how to counter it. The argument is that uh, the land is Israel and Israel belongs to the Jewish people. OK, so that, you know, uh, taught me, you know, how to use a, a Hebrew expression which reverses that, you know, because the Zionists, you know, they, they drive by yelling at me, you know, I'm Yisrael Chai, you know, which they think means long live Israel, the state of Israel. And then I reply to them, Hamidanet, Hamidanet, Velo Yisrael. That means the state is not Israel, which is literally true because Israel means the Jewish people as a whole and is also the name of Jacob, you know, who was, you know, who started all the 12 tribes and everything like that. Okay. So, but hardly anybody knows this, you know, they all think of Israel as being the state, you know, they have no idea that Israel is used, you know, to describe the Jewish people. It's even the name of the tribe to which I belong to as an Ashkenazi, as my father told me, but it is not the state. The state is not Israel. And this corresponds, you know, to the prophet Samuel. But the prophet Ezekiel, on the other hand, is saying that in every generation, there is some group, you know, who will come to try to annihilate us, and therefore we need a state, you know, to protect us. Completely the opposite of Samuel. So these are both tendencies within Judaism. So the Zionists use one and say it represents all of Judaism. And they say that it corresponds precisely with Zionism because of Ezekiel. And and uh, and then, then, then they, you know, you get into extremes, you know, like talking about the Amalekites, you know, they came to kill us and so we killed them all off, you know, hurrah, you know, let's do it again type thing. I'd like to say something about the Ezekiel thing because I had skipped this before and I got graded by quite a few religious people that I know. Um, uh, Ezekiel is an, as, is an exclusively esoteric text. Any attempt to take it literally, you might as well be a, a creationist or some shit like that. Like that's that's very disturbing to take the book of Ezekiel literally at all. It is an exclusively esoteric text. In fact, most prophets after Samuel are exclusively esoteric because on the material, on the material uh, uh, historical level, um, what was going on is that the one God was trying to destroy the Uteritic deities either by destroying the Asherah poles or, or appropriating their names. And so much of what's written there, you cannot take as a historical thing because what's going on was that most evidence, archaeologically speaking, says that we're actually Canaanites, Phoenicians, and Egyptians that got so pissed off at the system that they, we wrote a reverse version of the Mesopotamian myth. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and now as far as belief in, like, the context of the message, um, I think the Zohar is correct about those, about those books. Those books are not, those books, if you take those books as historical, uh, you're 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 not only going to not understand it, you're going to do what's contrary to what you're supposed to be doing, which is what we see with the Zionists. Um, most most prophets after Samuel are actually prophesying not about a state, but about a big giant paradise that will exist if we somehow be righteous or something. Uh, you know, uh -huh. sounds good. <laughs> but, also. Uh... There is archaeological, but not historical, evidence for the existence of Canaan. But there is no archaeological evidence for the existence of Israel. And and so the, the, there was apparently uh, a place called Canaan. But whether there was a place called Yisrael or Israel is debated. It's, it's, I, uh, it's, it's, it's Mark, debated. I've heard that argument before. And uh, it doesn't hold, you know, because there's a steel of Metapath, an Egyptian pharaoh, which does mention Israel and sort of, you know, celebrating their victory over uh, over Israel. 
So it uh, is I, I know what you, I know what you're talking about. I can I can actually confirm that uh, the, the the Marinda steel or whatever. I know what you're talking. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Because you and I talked about this a lot. Actually, it, it you know it uh, was one of our favorite discussions before all the extra chaos. I was, I was willing to be corrected. <laughs> but but in any case, you know, like it was a minor sort of you know period of history, right, Mark? You know, like at most, yeah. you know, the unified kingdom of uh, of uh, David and Solomon it was you know seventy five years, and then it split. Why did it split? Because as Samuel said, you know, there came to be a king who wanted to tax everybody so that he could, you know, um, pay off all of his, you know, slaves and servants and also wage war. And then all of a sudden the name of God became the God of, of war, the God of our armies or something like that. You know, it, it, the whole conception, you know, of the deity was changed uh, uh, soon after as results of the state. So, uh, but the argument, the best argument that I use, you know, in order to um, dissolve the claim to have an exclusive uh, ownership over the land is uh, in the uh, Abrahamic covenant. The first reference in Deuteronomy, in, um, in, uh, in Bereshit, uh, in Genesis, is that there, the descendants of Abraham, which of course includes the firstborn son Ishmael and Isaac, are forever welcome in the land of Canaan. It refers to the land of Canaan, doesn't talk about the land of Israel, doesn't exist in the Torah at that time, right? And it's also 400 years before the Jewish people were actually founded as a nation by Moses. Okay, so the descendants of Abraham are welcome in the land of Canaan, but the translation made doesn't say welcome. It says, um, take possession of, whatever that means. In any case, you know, it's interpreted as having an ownership quality to it. But I think that the Hebrew is being mistranslated there, in particular by Ezra, the editor, who, you know, shoved all sorts of, you know, junk into the Torah, into his version of the Torah. You know, there's other versions of the Torah. For instance, you know, the Samaritan version of the Torah doesn't have the genocidal element to it. The, the the Samaritan text is also older than the Masoretic text, and that's the text that's the Ezra text, by the way, is the Masoretic text. Yes, and there's other another uh, ancient text, you know, that has additional books to it, and that is contained in the Torah of the Ethiopian community, which I was just reading about today. They've got about you know four other books, you know, like in there, which I've never heard about. There's so much you know to discover here, that it's been concealed, both by the Zionists and, and Orthodox, you know, who seem to rely upon Ezra as the official version of the Torah, which it isn't. Hmm. Also, this is the, uh, I, think a, I think a good counter to... Um... We need a part two, since the time's running out, because this, this conversation cannot be over after all that. Okay, but I think a, a good counter to the, to the idea of the Jewish ownership of Israel is, is the archaeological evidence which shows that that all of us everyone on earth maternally comes from africa and ah. that being and and that being is is referred to as eve nicknamed eve and so does that mean that all of us are african and all, all of us have a uh a, a right a right to africa no of course not so you know the idea of um of of jews having a right to to the holy land because of 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 certain statements in the Tanakh and other sources is absurd i mean i mean not only a right mark an exclusive right and nobody else has any right to be there you know yeah. this is this doesn't come from judaism this does not come from the torah not from any version of the torah either this comes from the european nation state concept this comes from hegel mm -hmm. Well, yeah. In fact, the uh, well, I mean, unfortunately, Ezra was a Judean supremacist, so he 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 proclaimed a dominant right, but even he didn't make an exclusive right. right. The, the exclusive right is a European invention. That's like, he, right. Yeah. Even Ezra, Ezra, Ezra wasn't even a Zionist. Ezra was a Judean supremacist, which is not a good thing. But like he was that. But mm. I think the Zionists have no problem adopting stuff like that. Anything that gives credence to their precious state, they'll adopt, twist, mm. mangle, or whatever they have to do. This is precisely. I have some why... proof to show you. I have some proof to show you. You see these uh, stripes here on the kafia. You know where else you can find this this stripe, this black stripe, 
on a telus. Yes. Yes. This is the same stripe as on a telus. What does it mean? You see with the two bands, you know, going alongside of it? These are wheel tracks of a wagon carrying people traveling. And it's black because it comes from Africa. Canaan was the road from Africa into both Europe and Asia. And that's where this stripe comes from, both on the Talus and the Kafia. Also indicates the closeness of Judaism and Islam as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, concluding minutes. You know, everybody gets a minute to conclude here. Okay, go for it. I'd like to honestly convert to Judaism as soon as I can, but I can't really find a you know, a non-Zionist synagogue around here. Yeah. I'll do my best to assist you in that department. Um, uh, my conclusion, I want a part two. <laughs> I want a part two of this. <laughs> next week. Okay, next week. Oh, not next week now. All right, that's fine. fine, fine. All I can say is that I, I, I spend much of my day crying. And um, and that's, I tell it, other, I tell people around my, my Kanzo complex that all the time and they say why are you crying and I say because because of the gases and most most, most people here have no idea what I'm talking I'm talking about they don't mm -hmm. follow it mm -hmm. but but literally if like if you watch my podcasts I'm I'm crying mm -hmm. throughout much of my podcasts on Gaza and mm -hmm. I I can't see how any to me a human being is a being with is a Homo sapien with humanity, and if 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 a Homo sapien does not have humanity, that Homo sapien really should not be called a human being. Hmm. Homo sapien, yeah, human being, no. Wow. Well, uh, okay. So, I'm going back to the vigil this Sunday. It's going to be my last one before I go into the um, hospital for the knee operation. Then I'm going to be in convalescence. I'm supposed to be in convalescence for six weeks, but I think that after two weeks, I, I can get up and go back to the vigil because I don't expect this to be over. You know, when people start, you know, dying off in thousands because of starvation, that, you know, then it's going to even reach Texas. And then you're going to be sought after as a, as a voice of reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or be sought after for, for other reasons. Well, you're being sought after immediately, you know, by the Zionists, you know, <laughs> to stop you, you know, because they know that even one person can crack open their, their uh, propaganda. You know, it, it just, the whole thing relies upon, you know, the Zionists coming to a common agreement to lie, even though they're not, they know they're lying. And even though they know that the people they're talking to know that they're lying as well, they don't care as long as they keep up the narrative, you know, and they repeat it and, and they copy the same thing that everybody else is saying, then they think that they have, you know, unity because unity gives them strength. <laughs> this is how they think, you know, it's a military, military mentality. It's also neurotic and psychotic, you know, but it's, you know, Indeed. It's that way. But it's nice to see the narrative finally falling apart and so fast, too. Uh, incredible, isn't it? Yeah, even the U.S. has to push, you know, against Israel. They couldn't vote against in favor of Israel in the last Security Council meeting. So the uh, motion passed to, to calling for a ceasefire. Now, what else is coming up in the Security Council and what the U.S. is going to do about it, you know, is indeterminate, indeterminate, you know, so we'll see what happens there. This week is going to be a big week again, you know. And then, you know, we're waiting for Iran to do something. Now, Iran made a deal with the United States. The U.S. would back off if Iran took on Israel and, and gave it a blow somewhere. So that hasn't happened yet because, you know, I, I was really surprised to hear this, you know, but Iran, you know, was saying, you know, like, we'll hold off on a strike against Israel if Israel agrees to its two-state solution and recognizes the state of Palestine. Now it's going to happen anyway, you know. Yeah, Instead yeah, of Palestine is being yeah. considered in committee, you know, right now, and it's going to be recommended uh, to the uh, General Assembly to be voted upon, you know, soon. So, you know, Palestine is going to be a recognized state, and then everybody's going to know about it, you know, in the whole world. <laughs> There's no blocking that. You know, I'm waiting for that to happen, you know, then I can go back to the video and say, aha, <laughs> you know, now you're equal to Palestine, aren't you? <laughs> well, 
So. Okay, so, okay, we're good for now. And then we've got so much to discuss and research. And then we'll be back, you know, every week from now on. That's good. Okay? So, you know, we take this and we share it wherever we can, everywhere and anywhere. Okay. Bye for now. Okay. And Shalom. Shalom Aleikum. Shalom Aleikum. Shalom and Salam. Ma Salam. Shalom. Yeah. Adia.